Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aquarius. If Aquarius is your solar lunar ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so we have the two of discs which has everything to do with change. Okay, and let's see what these tea leaves have to say tonight. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell and we'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to like the video, leave a comment, any kind of interaction is most welcome. I love hearing from you all. And um, I don't really like having to do those little things at the beginning of the video. <laughs> um, but I, my husband, shout out to Dove and Serpentero, tells me I should. So I'm going to try to remember. Okay, let's see. All right. So, ooh, we have an 84. Not a number I see very often. 84. Interesting. We do have this kind of real lunar energy here. So maybe a little bit of distortion. We also have two, one, one. I'm gonna go with 211. So 84 and 211. No, I'm looking at this on this from this angle. This one looks like the head of a bunny. It looks kind of like kawaii, um, kind of cutesy, uh, like a little cartoon type of thing. And then we have it looks like a face, kind of side the uh, profile, the side profile, um, kind of the nose here, the mouth, and the eye. Uh, we have a person standing here with a blade of some kind. Um, we also have IA. Maybe you're from Iowa. <laughs> um, so I almost kind of feel like, I feel like there's almost this energy of like going off of the base instincts. Now with the rabbit, um, you know, we think of fertility and abundance and lots of babies and, you know, um, you know, this kind of thing. Um, but we have the, we have the person with the sword and, and I feel like there's almost this kind of, uh, there's a sense of desire rising, right? Um, Maybe a little bit twitter uh if you remember that term from um, Bambi. <laughs> um, so I almost feel like it, it kind of is. It's like you're in conflict. It's like uh, I have these real kind of desires and and maybe attraction and, you know, just kind of um, in that very spring kind of vibe, right? Um, but I think the more logical, rational part of your mind is like kind of, okay, let's reel it in a little bit. Maybe, um, you know, just let's think things over a bit. Um, you know, be not, not fully, um, you know, turning away from it. But I think being a little bit mindful, thoughtful, looking at, you know, what are, what are the factors that are kind of leading me to, um, these feelings. And, um, and I, you know, I, I don't think that Aquarius is a person who, 
um, is often too frivolous, especially with themselves. And, um, and I, I do, I feel that you, um, absolutely, um, you know, I think that you like to know where the, where, why, why are you feeling this way right now? You know, maybe it's not a very deep answer, right? It's instinctual. It's, you know, just, it's part of being an animal and, and, and so on. But I also think that, you know, you are somebody that likes to look for these kind of, uh, deeper underlying, um, strands of emotionality and psyche and, and um, psychological occurrences and things. So um, I do, I feel, I feel there is kind of a, a sense of tempering, right? Kind of um, going a little slow, go slow with it, right? And, um, and now, because we're, I wanted to start with this, but I'm about, I think I'm almost five minutes in, so I can probably talk about it. I f from what I read is that you have to be careful about what you talk about in those first few minutes, um, just because of the algorithm, <laughs> um, you know, so which I, it's not always my instinct to play well with that thing, but um, I have to. Right. And I know people don't always like the titles and, and that stuff either. Um, but you know, the, the algorithm likes what the algorithm likes. And I don't, uh, you know, I don't know what to say besides that. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, some of these roles, I don't know if they're real or not, but I've heard them from other creators and, and so on. So anyways, we're looking at a tree. Okay. And then we have the, the, um, the memories right here. So we do have like this other, um, sign of fertility. We have, um, a face right here with the eyes. And then we have the lunar crescent above. So this is the lunar energy. I'm really, um, we feel that there's this, uh, real kind of Diana energy here. Um, that is the goddess of the hunt. Um, also very much related to, um, that, to the, to the moon. And, um, and so I feel, you know, there is kind of this, and listen, we're right on the cusp of it being the full moon. Um, so all this makes sense. It's all, it's all in its right place. Um, and I do feel that there is kind of this, uh, untangling this, this loosening of maybe inhibition, maybe kind of living a little bit more in your fantasies, um, allowing yourself to kind of travel through, you know, the corridors of your mind and, um, and I do feel like this, it comes from a place of sensuality, but also creativity, you know, deep creativity. And, um, and I feel that you are somebody who really is interested in nurturing that within yourself. You are absolutely devoted to, uh, your pursuits within the creative sector. And so, um, you know, when, when you have this inspiration to live your life, to experience things as these are what you draw upon, these are where we gain our perceptions, our, in, our impressions, our, um, the sensations of being and, um, and all of the, you know, philosophical and emotionality that goes along with that. And so, you know, I do, I feel this is a place where, um, you are, I, I almost feel a little bit wild, a little bit, um, you can imagine almost like, uh, you know, like a midsummer's night dream, you know, just kind of in that bizarro garden, uh, <laughs> you know, um, kind of a masquerade of some kind, um, a little bit other than the self that you are during the day, you know, 
um, and kind of abiding the rules of the night that nocturnal lifestyle and so um, I do I can imagine a tree of the night a tree of the evening um, how it looks like so many things when the shadows are upon it and um, and and I do feel that you just are so kind of tapped into um, this kind of uh, it's spirit and it's spirit with these kind of layers of um, a fantasy of of um, illusion but it's not it's not something that is torment it's not something that um, you feel tricked by this is something that you will in, willingly partake in and um, if you've ever heard of like immersive theater right this is where um, there's like a theater like a theater production a play and um, you can kind of walk through it there are people playing characters in real time you can interact with them um, and uh, you know all the, they all look different depending on the production but um, you know, the, it is kind of playing an active role in uh, this artistic pursuit. And I kind of, you know, I feel like you're almost experiencing uh, these parts of your life in this way that you're kind of, you're in this world theater. You are, um, you are in there partaking in something um, greater in the collective uh, kind of you know, interestingly drawn to others who maybe are living um, lives that are a little more eccentric or, um, you know, uh, what's the word, kind of non-traditional or, you know, kind of creatives of some kind. And, uh, and, I, and I feel that, you know, in this visitation uh, to this place, there's a lot of power here for you. I feel like you feel so much yourself in these moments. Now, can you always live like this? I don't know, maybe. But I don't think that it's something that's attractive to you. I think that you equally um, love the day side. You know, you you like being in the, in, um, the glow of the sun. You like seeing things in the mundane and, and going about your day in, in little... Um, and little nuanced moments, you know, just kind of, um, I feel like it's a comfortable place for you in a lot of ways. It's, you don't, I don't think that you mind having a, you know, quote unquote, uh, kind of normal life and routine and, and, um, doing the things that you care about, but there's this other side of you. And I don't think that you were, it's not, you're not, um, put off by this kind of darker night side thing, kind of a left-handed path, right? Um, you know, I, I, and again, I feel you know, there are people who just want to always dwell in this world. And, um, you know, for some people that probably works and for some people it, it is very destructive. Um, but I feel like you are truly kind of a, a person that can move between um, these dualities. And, um, and it, I don't think that it is something that becomes corrosive to your life at all. Um, you know, you are somebody who can um, go and have this time. And I think of almost the, the, mad, like a, the madness of a, a, like a bacchanalian um, gathering, right? Just, uh, totally uninhibited and, and strange and, and, um, full of mysteries and, and so on. Um, but being able to, um, kind of depart from that and go back to life as it usually is. And, um, and I think that's a really healthy balance. I don't think, you know, there's anything, terrible about that. I actually kind of envy um, somebody that is able to do so. Okay, so we have this kind of little smiley face here. So 
So I feel like we have kind of an offering happening. Now we have a face here, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, um, kind of this ornate hat of some kind. Um, immediately looking at this, it reminds me of like a Mobius uh, drawing. Um, if you know who Mobius is, if you don't go look him up, he was a um, he was a comic um, illustrator and and an artist and you know an illustrator in general, painter and and everything else. But um, really interesting um, work. And um, so, anyways, kind of reminds me of that. Um, and then we have these two people, and I feel like they're standing beneath. Um, it looks like a fish and it looks like the sun, <laughs> which makes sense. Um, but both together, that very kind of heliocentric, um, and fish, uh, um, symbolism coming together. And, um, then we have another person over here that looks like the empress to me. Okay. So we have the devotee, we have the empress, we have um, it may be devotees of the uh, solar worship or, um, you know, the Christology um, worship. And, uh, and so also this kind of uh, really interesting um, traveler. Now going off of the Mobius vibes, a lot of the artwork is kind of um, this futuristic, but also kind of minimal, um, I almost kind of think of like Star Wars type of energy, um, but also kind of mysticism mixed in there. And, um, and so kind of this almost mystic traveler, um, you know, traveler of the depths and, um, And I really, I just, I feel like you're just so much in a place in your life where uh, you absolutely, um, I think you're just done putting things off, uh, especially in your magical work, your religious work, your self work. Um, I think that a lot of your life has been spent kind of taking care of a family or um, being kind of a good uh, community member, being um, very present maybe in your work, in your career, your uh, the culture of your workplace, um, same with family, and maybe if you raise kids, the same kind of thing, you put them first and your life was kind of revolved around that. Well, I think that you're in this place where um, there's the ability to kind of really focus on the things that um, you've always wanted to, you know, and have been drawn to. I feel that you are truly a very, um, you're a very devout person, um, whatever that looks like for you, if it is religious, spiritual, um, the pursuit of, you know, self-evolution or whatever it is. Um, I feel there is such a deep devotion here. Now, I also feel that there is that solar aspect. Um, and I, and this could be just, um, it could be that, well, it could be, well, it could be an Abrahamic religion, of course, but, um, I kind of, I feel like it is within your, within your waking life in your mundane life, um, to some degree, yeah, I think that you have kind of chased the bag, as the, as the kids say, gone after the money, right? You've been interested in um, really trying to make your life financially stable. At times, it almost feels like it could have been like a religion to you. Um, now, I don't know that this is still the same, but I do feel like it is a, con it's not a concern, but it is something that you think about. It's a priority. Okay. You, I don't feel like you're a person that's going to, um, you know, give away everything and go, uh, you know, traveling with just like whatever you have in your backpack. Um, I do, I do think that, um, there is an abundance in your life though. And I think it's because you're good at what you do. Now we also have, and I'm looking up here, we have a rabbit. As I'm saying this, um, I, 
I really feel like you have the ability to um, create resources for yourself pretty easily. Um, you're, I mean, maybe just so good at business or um, you're very innovative. You're always like kind of thinking about different ways to, um, you know, expand your sources of income or, or whatever it is. And, um, and that has been very fertile and abundant for you. Okay. Um, now with that Empress energy, uh, I really do feel that there is a sense of, um, blossoming in your life. If you can think of the Empress kind of surrounded by the flowers and in the garden, ushering in, um, this time of great, um, growth and, and an abundance of, life and beauty and and so on um and i feel you know i feel that this is this is true of you now i think that part of the work here is figuring out um the balance between the desire for uh having money finances and um exploring exploring these spiritual aspects of your life the um holistic side of your life now these things are not mutually exclusive by any means um but i do think that there is a sense of trying to kind of temper your desire to focus on uh the material work okay um, I don't think it's out of a place of shame or feeling like there's anything wrong with it. Uh, but I do feel like you've wanted to do these other things for so long. Um, even as a young person, I think you always kind of had this desire to, um, kind of, you know, I don't know, like, join a cult, <laughs> you know, um, join a, a religious order or, um, go traveling to like sacred sites or, you know, something. And, and I don't, those are just examples. I'm not saying that's what it is, but I do feel like there's this, um, you know, there's something within you that you have, you have a lot of questions you know, and you like to experience people who are maybe of different faiths. They, um, you know, uh, are living different, li di very different kinds of lives and, and, um, and being able to kind of witness them in their grace is something that is profoundly inspiring to you. Okay. And so I feel like this is really that time where you do, you go exploring, you go looking for those things that you've been dreaming of for so long. And um, it feels like it can't wait anymore. This isn't something I'm willing to um, take my time with any longer. Now, we also have a person who looks like they're releasing a bird right here. And so to me, that kind of almost feels like you will take this experience and turn it into some kind of message. And I feel like maybe you could write a book or maybe you start a channel or, um, you know, you become some kind of, uh, guide or, um, like a life coach or, you know, whatever it is. And, um, but I do, I feel like you have a message and you are looking for your voice. And it is coming, right? You're going to find it here. You're going to get it. And uh, and I see that being a really, something that feels, it comes to you naturally. You know, I think that you probably are somebody who's a good storyteller, you're a good communicator. Um, but you don't necessarily do the, you don't like to communicate maybe unless it's something you really care about. And so I do feel like this journey will be something that you want to share. And, um, and the world needs more of that. I do believe. I do very much believe so. Okay, let's see. So immediately I'm looking at this and it looks like a J-I-M. So I was seeing Jim immediately um gem or some 
Or maybe it's I'm J, like I am J. Uh, I don't know, but it feels like somebody coming through and it's somebody who is beloved to you because we have little hearts all over the place here. Um, and I feel like they have transitioned. So maybe a good friend, maybe a sibling, maybe a spouse. Uh, but I do feel like they're here. Um, and they've been really reaching out to you a lot. I feel like there's a lot of support um, coming from them for you to kind of, uh, yeah, get into this place of, of a happy change. Um, a, a change that in, is inspired by uh, your passions, your um, your curiosities, your, uh, you know, that kind of internal uh, compass really going, you know, going off and just, it's time to go. It's time to go see some things, experience some things, um, research and, and um, try some different things. And yeah, so I do, I just feel like they, uh, I feel like it's just kind of like cheering you on. Now we also have a nine and a two. So we have 92. And we have a duck. I almost wonder if you have like a, um, like a duck painting or like a little figurine of a duck. A duck, it feels like an important symbol for some reason. Or somebody like important to you is has like duck artwork or I don't know. Like it just, it feels like something that, and when you hear it, you'll be like, oh my goodness, you know. Um, my grandpa <laughs> had a bunch of wooden ducks. That's what he liked to do, you know, or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like the duck seems like something that will be, uh, you'll, you'll be able to identify what that is. Okay, so let's look. The wild bohemian affirmation cards. These are the fire element. And we'll go ahead and flip through here. Okay, oops, I'm gonna stop where it feels right. Okay, and it says, I am love. Stop overthinking and have unbound appreciation for every little detail of life. Every little thing. You better appreciate it. <laughs> no, I, I wish to live this way. I really, um, I'm a complainer though. You guys, I really, I love to complain. I don't love to complain, but I do complain. I'm just not even outwardly. I just complain in my own dang head. And that's part of why I've been talking about this, like, uh, changing our internal monologue or dialogue or whatever you call it. Um, actively working on that because I have needed it so profoundly. Um, I just, the negative talk in my chatter in my head sometimes, it ruins my day. It will ruin my day. Um, and I let it. So I have to work on that. Absolutely. So anyways, Aquarius, I love you. I thank you for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel so much. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I love hearing from you. Um, what else? I think that's it. I'm taking a drink here. Um, I've, I had to take some allergy medication today because um, I've been out in the, out in the natures the last few days and um, I just, my allergies are like on eight, I would say. 
Uh, and so I'm, I am really, I doing the like local honey and, um, you know, drinking all the different teas and, oh, vitamin C and everything else. It just, I don't know. We're going to see what happens. I had to do it today though. I was out there with my daughter, like going through the woods. <laughs> it just set me off. Um, so I feel like I'm in the desert and I probably sound like it as well. Um, but yeah. So anyways, I hope that you all are surviving allergy season. Um, <laughs> and, uh, other than that, yeah, let me just tell you again, I love you and I thank you. And we're going to talk in a few days. Good night. Good night. Good night.